Hello, welcome back to my channel, One Lolly Pop Life. I'm Shona, and today I wanted to take the time to talk to you about my favorite podcast. I love podcasts. I jokingly call myself a podcast addict, um, and maybe it's not a joke, maybe I really am a podcast addict. I listen to them on my way to work. I listen to them when I'm getting ready in the morning. I listen to them while I'm at work. But I notice I do have quite a few that I go back to and listen to over and over and over again, no matter what. If, if that podcast drops, I'm listening to it, usually the day it, it drops. So I wanted to um, talk about those and share with you some of my favorite podcasts. Many of them are book or reading related podcasts, although that's not the only thing I'm gonna share with you. I'm going to share with you um, my reading related podcasts and then some other podcasts that I really do enjoy. And if you haven't heard of them, maybe you can check them out and see if you enjoy them too. Uh, or if you have heard of them, maybe you can just let me know down below. So the first one I want to talk to you about is what should I read next? This was the first reading podcast I found. It's Ann Bogle, Modernist of Starcy. And I just love the format of this podcast. It's consistent, uh, week after week. And I just love Anne, and I love the rapport that she develops with each one of her guests. And I love listening to her walk through her recommendations to the guests. Basically, the format of this podcast is Anne has a guest on, and they talk a little bit about the guest reading life in the beginning, or if the guest is a, a blogger or a YouTuber or a podcaster, um, they'll talk a little bit about that. And then the meat of the show is the guests will share three books they love, one book that's not for them, and Anne will then recommend three or four books. And I just love that. And I have found quite a few books um, through that podcast that I ne would not necessarily have found some backlist and some new ones. Now, she recently launched a companion podcast called One Great Book, and it's much shorter, and she talks about one great book, it's a backlist book uh, and she talks about it and what makes it one great book and then if you're a patreon of hers then she also does a podcast that same week uh, of one great book and it's a new release about to come out so you can get on the library holds or pre-order it whatever you want to do so I really really enjoy it. actually I, I pretty much love anything modern Mrs. Darcy or Anne Bogle um, I just enjoy her a lot the next one I love is The Librarian is In, and this is put on by the New York Public Library, and the two hosts are Gwen and Frank, and their chemistry and their rapport is so much fun. And what I really like about this podcast is, because it's a library, it focuses much more on backlist books or books that are kind of trending at the library. And I just, I love it. What was interesting is one, one podcast, it was during, um, gay pride month or leading up to gay pride month and leading up to the stonewall anniversary and they the new york public library actually put together a book i can't remember the name of it and they brought the librarian in from the new york public library who spearheaded that and the the, the whole history of stonewall and they had a they had a display at the library and then they had this book that was published and brought that in that was really interesting to hear to hear about the collections that these are found and housed in and you know what went into pulling that all together they have brought in different librarians from the, the from the new york public library um, and showcase the various programs that they offer whether it's a program that um, aims and targets underserved children or uh, children's programming or it's it's just really neat and like I said the rapport between Gwen and Frank is so much fun I just love them they went on hiatus in the summer and I miss them every single day I went back and listened to all their back back um, podcasts and when they came back they, they they're only they used to drop a podcast once a week they came back now they're only going every other week which made me very sad which brings me to my next podcast which is just the right book by Roxanne Cody. Now Roxanne Cody owns um, RJ Julia bookstores up in the Northeast. And I love her podcast. Hers is just more of a conversational. She podcast, she will have guests on and interview guests, usually authors. Um, and she talks about the books that 
she likes and that are meaningful to her or that uh, may have um, particular relevance to what's going on in the world right now. And a um, little story about her. My husband, my family and I were up in on vacation up in New England and we stopped at this, I think it was called the Chicken Coop. Anyways, it was like a combination antique and bookstore. And it was out in the middle of nowhere. We were in Maine. I can't remember what state we were in, but we were in the middle of nowhere in New England. And we walked in and me and my daughter, my teen daughter, are looking around and I hear this woman chit-chatting with one of the sellers. And I was like, gosh, that voice sounds so familiar. Roxanne has a very distinct voice. And so I told my daughter, I said, I think that's that's Roxanne Cody from my podcast, just the right book. I'm pretty sure it is. And then we stalked her because <laughs> we stalked her throughout the store because I wanted to make sure she was. And finally, I just kind of tapped her on the shoulder. And I said, hey, do you do you have a podcast? And she's like, yes, I do. And I said, are you Roxanne Cody? And she's like, yes, I am. And I was totally fangirling it. It was ridiculous. But um, was I've got a picture with her. She was very gracious anyways. Um, so she's another one that went on a very long hiatus and I was actually a little concerned that she wasn't coming back, but she has relaunched her podcast and she's changed the format a little bit. It seems to be now she is focusing on nonfiction books, which is just fine with me. Uh, some of the nonfiction books I read last year, I found through her anyways. So, but um, like I said, those, what should I read next, the librarian and just the right book are the ones that I listen to without fail. Next one is From the Front Porch. This is run by Annie Jones, and she's got a co-host. I can't remember his name. I think it's Chris. Anyway, she runs the bookshelf in Thomasville, Georgia. And again, this is just another one where her and her co-host are very conversational. They have a backlist book club once a month um, where they will discuss a book that's, you know, from a backlist. And they will talk about what they're reading, what's up and coming. It's just a very conversational uh, book talk or podcast. And I enjoy them. I, again, I enjoy their um, back and forth and the rapport that, that she has. My next one is Book Cougars. Now, they also have a booktube channel. Book Cougars are two middle-aged women searching for just the right book. And it's Chris and Emily. And um, they just get together and talk about their adventures, their reading adventures, uh, their biblio adventures. They go on biblio adventures and they talk about it. And I, I just really enjoy their insight and, and all the different content that they do present on their, their channel. They'll go to Book Expo together. They interf interview authors at, at Book Expo. Um, they're just really a lot of fun. And same demographic here same age demographic so i think that that's another reason why i enjoy it my next one is reading women kendra scott not kendra it's not kendra scott kendra scott's the jeweler anyways kendra and autumn that's all we need to know and um they exclusively talk about books written by women um and about women and i think this is so needed I think, uh, I think we're getting a little better, but I still think women are underrepresented in, in literature and all the main awards. And, um, you know, we as women, I think we need to uplift and support women. And so they do a great job of that. And theirs is one of the reading challenges that I will undertake every year. And they have, they focus on certain months, like um, this month in August, they focus on women in translation, translation month. And they run on a lot of books and authors related to women in translation or books in translation. A couple months ago, they did the Asian um, Pacific Islanders months and brought on authors and spotlighted books um, about uh, by women and about women um, with the East um, Asian experience. So that was that was really good. So I really enjoy them a lot. Um, so that's about, there's a, a runner up that I've just discovered called Currently Reading that I, I do enjoy too. But like I said, I just found it. Um, and what I like about th that podcast is um, they'll discuss books, but they are certainly not afraid to be honest. Like if they don't like a book, they're going to say they don't like a book. So I kind of enjoy that aspect of it too. So we're going to move out of my literary podcast and move into some non-literary podcasts that I like. My absolutely 100%, probably top podcast of all time 
is called Ear Hustle. Now, if you haven't heard of Ear Hustle, you need to go find it. And yes, I'm being bossy. Um, not only do you need to go find it, you need to start it. Season one, episode one, and just listen from there in order. And just be prepared to just set aside your whole morning or afternoon to do so. Now this is produced by uh, prisoners in San Quentin Prison in the United States. Uh, there's a volunteer, of course her name has totally slipped my mind. She was a visual artist and she came in and volunteers at San Quentin and got involved with the inmates in the media center and they pitched this podcast to Radiotopia. It was a contest and they won. And what I think they've created is beautiful. What this podcast has done for me and, and dare I say my teenage daughter is really humanize um, folks that are in prison and just really highlighted that um, not everybody in prison is a bad person. They may have been a good person that made a really bad decision that affected not just um, their life but other people's lives um, in significant and um, irreversible ways. Anyways, um, this podcast, like I said, um, not only have we learned about prisoners, but we've learned a lot about um, the criminal justice system in general and in California. The host, one of the hosts of the podcast, Erlon Johnson, he, my daughter said to me, oh my God, he just seems so nice and smart. How is he in jail for 25 years to life? And um, we later learned that um, he was caught up in California's three strikes um, law, which basically you are convicted of a cr any crime three times um, or three crimes of any type. Um, then it's you're out essentially. And anyways, just very well done. And um, they don't focus on uh, the criminals crimes and what put them in there for, for the most part that is not the focus of it it is really about life in prison and they do a really great job of that and like I said it is it is to me it's just perfection so I really recommend that one my next one is the science of happiness I am obsessed with the science of happiness in general um I took this is science of happiness it's put on by the greater good foundation um out of Berkeley and I actually took their Science of Happiness course. And um, anyways, I enjoy the podcast. Basically the premise of the podcast is um, the host and the gentleman who runs the Greater Good Science um, Center uh, brings in what he calls a happiness guinea pig and they are to choose a um, happiness practice and to implement it for two weeks and they come back and talk about their experience with their hap that happiness practice and I really enjoy it. I really enjoy the insights that the guests bring. Um, I enjoy um, the science debt. I can't say his name. Um, the host who runs and directs the Greater Good Science Center after the happiness guinea pig talks about experience, the experience, he actually will go into the science behind it or have experts on that will go in the science behind it and I really enjoy that. Um, happier, I'm just gonna group happier and happier in Hollywood into one, into one um, podcast. Happier by Gretchen Rubin. Um, she studies happiness habits and the science of human nature. She's written several books. I love every single one of them. The Happiness Project, Happier at Home, The Four Tendencies, and um, Better Than Before, and then most recently, Out of Order, Inner Calm, which was the most different of all our books, but I really have enjoyed all of them. So she has a podcast with her sister, Elizabeth Kraft, and um, it's very predictable it follows a very predictable format and I but I love it with you know every week we get a happiness hack every week we get a try this at home tip um, the rapport with her and her sister is awesome they give themselves happiness demerits and gold stars and I, I don't know I just love it and um, her sister actually is a Hollywood writer and her and her uh, writing partner um, Sarah Fain they put on the happier in Hollywood um, podcast. Now that's a little different. Um, it talks about, you know, being happier in Hollywood. So if you're not in that world, I'm obsessed with it. I have learned so much about the writing of TV shows because they're TV show writers. Um, we actually got to go through an entire process with them from pitching a show to it being made into a pilot. 
Um, and then the pilot, once the pilot went, it went into a full season and we went through all that. Um, and then the show did not actually get picked up for a second season. So we got through, we got to go through that whole thing with them. It was really interesting. Now they've written for the dollhouse, Joss Wheaton. Um, they were writers on the shield and the show I just talked about is called the fix. And then my last one is speak up by Matthew Dix. And this is a story storytelling podcast and actually Matthew Dix wrote a book called um, Storyworthy and it's all about the science of um, storytelling verbally and I him and his wife put on this podcast um, called Speak Up and it gives practical tips on how to become a good storyteller they have a story on every week and then they critique the story and they run um, a storytelling show or production up in Connecticut where they live um so of course they get permissions from the storytellers to spotlight their stories and then and then do the critique but I really enjoy that one as well anyway so those are my top I didn't count 10 or 11 favorite podcasts do you have favorite podcasts you listen to I would love to hear about them down in my comments also it would really mean a lot to me if you would um like and subscribe to my channel I would totally appreciate it Thanks. Goodbye.